One of the most daunting and stressful situations a combat pilot can find himself in is being shot down inside enemy territory. Once his plane has been disabled, the pilot has just a few precious moments to attempt to escape from his aircraft. Leaving the cockpit in and of itself is a complex and risky affair, but once outside the disabled plane, the pilot finds himself in a hazardous situation that could involve injuries, certain rescue operations, or even being captured. To answer the complexity of these issues, the Goodyear Corporation came up with a ludicrous yet brilliant solution. Inflatable planes. The idea was that a downed pilot would be able to deploy an inflatable aircraft and fly himself back to safety without endangering the lives of others. Rescuing a pilot behind enemy lines was so risky and costly that the US military decided to conduct a thorough development program to test and eventually deploy inflatable aircraft. The results, after years of testing, would shock even the US Air Force commanders in charge of the project. Origins Before Goodyear developed the Inflataplane, the concept of inflatable planes was conceived as a way to make flying safer and impacts considerably less harmful to the pilot flying the aircraft. The idea of a rubber aircraft filled with air goes back to 1931. The aircraft industry was still young and considerably unregulated, making fatal accidents extremely common for pioneering pilots. After tragically losing a close friend to an airplane crash in a Brazilian jungle, American inventor Taylor McDaniel came up with the scheme to make an inflatable rubber aircraft that would make impacts and crash landings much safer for pilots and crews. The early prototypes showed great potential as they astoundingly lived up to the idea of a crash-proof plane. During tests, the prototypes could hit the ground at high speeds, and the rubber material would absorb most of the impact energy, leaving the pilot uninjured. To make the concept even more appealing, not only was flying an inflatable plane safer for the pilot, but it was also safer for the plane, as the rubber hull would bounce back to its original shape after a crash. McDaniel polished his designs for many years, until he was awarded a patent for an inflated rubber tube glider, which successfully flew on January 4th, 1931. He believed that an inflatable aircraft held the key to a safer and friendlier aviation future, and did everything in his power to promote his design and ideas. A press demonstration aimed at reporters, photographers, and news corporations was then scheduled for January 11th. As the press gathered around, McDaniel showed the world his patented invention, towed by a truck. The inflatable glider reached an altitude of 100 feet before the pilot suffered instability and control issues, but he was able to land safely. After the close call, McDaniel intended to cancel the press conference to take the prototype back to the shop and modify the control systems. Still, a press photographer who had missed the landing begged for one more attempt. The ambitious inventor complied, and the glider took off again, this time reaching an 80-foot height before the pilot lost control of the aircraft. A crash was now inevitable, but despite the unfortunate occurrence, the impact would attest that the inflatable aircraft had the potential to save lives. The glider struck the ground right wing first in a near upright position, completely collapsing it and absorbing the worst impact. The nose crashed against the ground next, while the wing bounced back to its initial shape, completely unscathed. As the glider settled down and held its original form, no damage was visible. Contentedly, the pilot suffered only from a sore heel and a twisted knee, while the inflatable prototype's only breakdown was a snapped cable, a total of 50 cents worth of damage. The press demonstration successfully proved how safe inflatable planes could be. McDaniel was eager to continue developing his idea, so he created a second prototype, this time shaped like a bird. He hoped it would perform much better and decrease the control issues that had plagued his previous design. Unfortunately, by 1932, the Great Depression had scourged the nation and paralyzed the aviation industry. McDaniel ran out of money before his invention could take off, and no one had any interest in funding his idea. Still, many other countries began experimenting with the novel technology. Inflatable planes around the world. The Soviet Union conceived a plan to use inflatable planes to deliver goods across its vast and often isolated territories. The tiny rubber planes would be hoisted by a large aircraft, and once above the target destination, they would glide down to the runway with the precious cargo, while the large aircraft continued its way. China and Great Britain also conducted extensive experimentation with a wide array of different inflatable plane prototypes. Still, all of the efforts were fruitless, and they were soon abandoned in favor of other light airplane ventures. 
One of the main reasons for the failure of so many initial inflatable plane prototypes had to do with the material itself, and the feature that made the concept so attractive was also what doomed it. Even when the planes technically worked, the air-filled rubber structure made for an incredibly slow aircraft. The rubber airframe that gave the design its legendary resistance to impact also plagued the units with a volatile performance, and the flexible material couldn't achieve the required level of aerodynamics. The many nations experimenting with inflatable aircraft technology could not circumvent the low speeds and instability issues, and by the 1950s, all inflatable plane projects had been cancelled. A Second Wind Inflatable plane technology would find a second wind in the most unexpected of places, a tire manufacturing company. In their constant search to improve tire performance, the Goodyear Corporation had developed a new material called Airman by the mid-1950s. Instead of relying solely on a layer of rubber, Airman technology consisted of a sheet of rubber sandwiched between two layers of high-performance fabric coated in neoprene. Once inflated, this new material provided one of the highest strength-to-weight ratios of any material in the world. Recognizing that the novel material could revolutionize the aircraft industry, Goodyear began an ambitious development project that saw them producing numerous inflatable plane prototypes in the span of five years, each faster and more stable than the last. Thanks to Airman, the new prototypes looked more like actual aircraft and less like inflatable swimming pool toys. The machines included functional cockpits, a small engine, and controllable stabilizers, and everything could be compacted into a small three-foot box. Out of all the experimental aircraft developed by Goodyear, their most successful series would be known as the Inflataplane. The first iteration of the Inflataplane was designed, developed, and tested by the Goodyear Aircraft Corporation in 1956 from their Wingfoot Lake Airship Base near Akron, Ohio. Thanks to its simple but effective nature, the initial prototype, dubbed GA-33, was built and flown in a little over 12 days. Several parts of the structure were built out of the new airmat material. This included the wings, tail assembly, and pilot seat. Meanwhile, the fuselage was built out of high-strength airship fabric, and fan-shaped patches of rubberized material design held the struts and metal supports that attached the landing gear and the pilot seat to the airplane. In contrast to McDonald's early designs, the new inflataplane was propelled by an engine, a 40-horsepower motor mounted on top of the wing in a conventional tractor setup. To maintain proper air pressure inside the inflated sections, even in the extreme event of light punctures, Goodyear installed an engine-driven air compressor that would keep it constantly inflated and rigid. The success of the GA-33 led to more advanced models. The subsequent version, named the GA-447, was partly funded by the Office of Naval Research, which allowed for a more complete evaluation cycle that included wind tunnel testing at Langley Air Force Base in Virginia. As the prototypes became more reliable and their test results more impressive, Goodyear realized that they were sitting on groundbreaking technology that could be used to save lives if implemented correctly. By then, the U.S. military was heavily involved in the Korean War, and the conflict had made something clear. Rescuing downed pilots was nearly impossible. During the Asian struggle, only 10 out of 100 pilots shot down behind enemy lines could be saved. Goodyear's inflated plane could provide a way for downed pilots to fly themselves to safety, solving a colossal military problem while also keeping rescue crews out of unnecessary danger. With that mindset, Goodyear presented their idea to the U.S. Air Force. A Tragic End The U.S. military quickly jumped on board the inflated plane concept as it seemed promising and innovative. Still, they were required to conduct their own testing trials in order to deem it safe for combat service. The latest iteration of Goodyear's inflated plane, the GA-468, was quite impressive. It could be easily inflated in five minutes using just a manual hand pump, and once airborne, it had a range of close to 300 miles or six hours of fly time, reaching a speed of 63 miles per hour. The design seemed perfect for its intended objective. The testing phase, conducted in conjunction with the Army Transportation Corps and the Office of Naval Research, gave such positive results that Goodyear built 10 more GA-468 models. The newest iteration ditched the 40-horsepower motor for a more potent 60-horsepower one, giving the new model more takeoff power and speed. Additional improvements included a combination wheel, hydro, and ski landing gear that allowed the inflated plane to operate off land, water, and snow without landing gear modifications required. Goodyear was so close to achieving a working model fit for military use that they successfully developed a parachute drop container for the deflated inflated plane as an airdrop rescue vehicle for pilots down within hostile territory. Development continued without a hitch. 
The GA-468 was so remarkable that the Army requested a modified version to carry a pilot and a co-pilot. This two-man aircraft featured a 60-horsepower engine, as well as a top speed of 69 miles per hour and a 230-mile range. Punctured Dreams The expectations were through the roof on all fronts, with some newspaper articles even claiming that inflatable plane technology would bring aviation to the average American family. They argued that someday families would be able to take an inflatable out of their car's trunk for a lovely holiday flight. However, the hype soon came crashing down. During a series of tests conducted by the U.S. Army and the U.S. Navy in 1959, a pilot nearly lost his life when the plane's rubber hull overextended. Less than three months later, another accident would halt the future of inflatable planes. During the last 35 minutes of a required flight, a young pilot pushed the inflatable plane to the limit, performing aggressive maneuvers that were not in the testing program. The aircraft was turning while going down when one of the controller cables under the wing came loose and got stuck over the pulley mechanism, disabling flight control. With an unresponsive stick, the aircraft continued to turn downwards until one of its rubbery wings bent and hit the propeller. The wing was completely destroyed, and air pressure quickly dropped. Because the inflated fuselage supported the engine mounts when the air pressure collapsed, the engine fell forward. The airless wings then began to flap violently as the aircraft plummeted down until one of the metal wingtips impacted the pilot in the head. The pilot quickly abandoned the plane, but he could not deploy his parachute in time and lost his life. The tragedy hit the military like a bucket of cold water, and all inflatable aircraft testing was immediately halted. By the 1960s, helicopter technology provided a far safer rescue solution for downed pilots, and all interest in inflatable planes vanished. Goodyear continued their efforts to promote the project for several years, but they too eventually abandoned all hope. Thank you for watching my video. Do you think inflatable rescue planes could actually work? Let us know in the comments section below, and make sure to subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels and hit the notification bell to get more history-inspired content like the video you just watched. Stay tuned.